This week, my guest is John Baldoni, who is a fellow member of the Marshall Goldsmith 100 Coaches and a sought-out executive coach and speaker from around the world. He's written more than 14 books that have been translated into 10 languages. Oh, my goodness, John. Welcome. How are you? Thank you, Morag. It's a pleasure to be on here, and uh, this will be fun. I am honored by your invitation to come in and talk about grace. Well, exactly. Well, it was interesting because I can remember not so long ago, as I stomped through an office, being told by a colleague that I lacked grace. And at that time, my answer was to learn how to be a ballroom dancer. I thought, I'll show you. There's grace in action. Um, you know, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that because that's something that has always appealed to me about grace. And it's that uh, beauty in motion and art. And so that is very definitely an element of, of grace. And when we think about mo mo movement, uh, and that's a sense of being in touch with one's own physicality. And so many of us, most of us who are knowledge workers, live in the cognitive realm. We spend all our time up here, and we lose contact with ourselves. I once had the opportunity uh, to do a number of courses uh, at Banff Center, and I worked with a dance troupe. And they were all about movement and motion, and of course, grace. And I learned about um, the connection between between inner and outer space, if you will. It's, it's inherent in yoga too. So, uh, so, but grace is that element within us. And people with grace, motion, tend to be more centered, more, more they understand themselves and maybe a higher degree of self-awareness. Now that's not a scientific thing, but they seem to carry themselves with a greater sense of self-regard. So. <laughs> Okay. It's a good well, insight. it's interesting. Grace, it caught my eye when uh, you shared the book, and I had a look through, and I'm thinking, here we are in 2020. What role does grace play in our world, especially today? It plays a significant role. The subtitle of the book is Grace, A Leader's Guide to a Better Us. And I wrote the book as um, a reaction to the our intemperate times, when we are so quick to um, jump on one another for a perceived slight. And let's take a step back, you know, and now that we're in the pandemic, we're all on edge. So if ever there were a chance, a need for grace, it's now. Grace, by my calculation, uh, is the the working for the greater good, the catalyst for the greater good. And grace certainly is inherent in uh, many faiths, um, as many as that I could research, but that also goes deeper into our psyche. It's in our DNA. We have something called the altruism gene, where we are predisposed to take care of our own. That's a mm -hmm. form of grace. My thinking of grace is that I'm dealing in the secular sense on a leader's responsibility for making things better for the team, for the organization, for working more positively with others. That's a form of grace. Well, as I was looking through and rereading the book yesterday, I realized that the chapters are structured that grace actually is an acronym as well. So grace is a an attitude, an approach, and how we show up as leaders, but it's also the acronym that helps us to dive deeper into the five skills or the five areas. So tell let's start with G. G for generosity. G for That's generosity. Why generosity and what's the first step somebody can take to demonstrate or develop generosity? Well, generosity is that willingness to share. And from an organizational dynamic, from a leadership standpoint, it's um, Admiral Stockwell, who was uh, in the Hanoi Hilton, and then he came back and studied Stoic philosophy of all things. He once said that uh, leaders gain power by giving it away. And that's true. Mm -hmm. And that's the generative power of leadership. And grace has an aspect in that. So when I'm generous to you, I will get something in return. There is not the expectation that I will get it, but from an organizational standpoint, when I'm generous with power, rather than hoard it, I share it. The team uh, prospers from that, and we all pitch in more together. Why? Because we have ownership. 
And if, if you think of ownership, dig down a little deeper, there's a, a shared ownership, which is generosity. Mm -hmm. I love that. And that's where you and I, I think, align with the ally mindset. Uh, my team and I talk about the concept of abundance and generosity. So that whole giving of our intellect, giving our expertise, helping others to be successful. And in return, at some point, it comes to pay us all back in droves. I'm glad you mentioned the word abundance, because that's exactly where it comes from. Um, and it, the more I have, the more I give, the more I share, yeah. it comes back to all of us. So that is in a sense of abundance. While our resources may be finite, our attitude of giving or sharing is an one of abundance because we can uh, make things better for others. So yes, very definitely abundance. And I think the counterpoint to that is when we start thinking with a scarcity mindset, a finite mindset, we tend to hoard, as you described earlier, information, skills, talents, etc., which results in a lack of grace. So what's the impact of having a lack of grace on a team, organization, or even the world? Well, I think a lack of grace is anything that does it, that where people are nasty to one another, when people mm -hmm. are, are sniping and snarking and all of that and bickering. And we, well, we're all human beings. We are frail creatures. We do stupid things. And I'm exhibit A on that. But um, so when we are tense, we tack, act out uh, sometimes on our things. Grace is that centering, that ability to say, hey, I'm better than this. Or look at often what happens is how, how often are we called out when we misbehave, I will say, mm. and, and I'm talking about being nasty, <clears throat> bickering or shouting or something like that. Uh, and then we see someone not react to that and they take it at a higher level and we go, oh, yeah, that's the way I should be acting. So it, in that sense, grace is also generative. That's another okay. form. Well, I love that because grace, generosity is the first one. And what you're saying there describes and leads nicely into respect the R of grace. So tell me a little bit more about this one. Respect is that ability to um, look at another person with an open heart. And, organize, and that can be, sometimes be hard to do in organizations. But I think it's particularly important now in our time of pandemic. I've written about how in crisis, uh, cream rises to the top. And you see who your performers are. And sometimes these people have been crossways with a manager or someone else, and they've gotten a, quote, bad rap. So uh, respect is looking at someone with an open heart and thinking, I'm going to assume the better of this. Our colleague, our friend, Alan Mulally, uh, that was his entire attitude when he ran Ford, Ford Motor Company. He came in from the outside and so didn't have any contacts inside the company. So he had that open heartedness. That's Alan as a person, but Alan as a leader. And from a leadership standpoint, when you go into someone and I don't make any preconceptions about you, you prove yourself to me. And then we go from there. Okay, I love it. So A. Which is action. A. Action. action is, that's what leaders do. Um, uh, grace is putting things into uh, energizing them, or, but, but acting for the good of others. A classic example, which I write about, is Dr. Uh, Mona Atisha, or Hannah Motisha, I'm always getting her name wrong. Excuse me, Dr. Mona. Dr. Mona uh, uh, Hannah Atisha. And she was a pedi is a pediatrician, and she worked in Flint, Michigan, and she noticed mm -hmm. the uh, le high lead levels. Oh, yeah. And story. You know, she could have just treated her patients, but she had a friend who worked at CDC and she, and she said, oh, Mona, I think you've got a, a, a lead poisoning thing here. So Mona took it upon herself to act and get things done. And she was really the champion that raised the issue in the community, in the state and at a national level. And she, um, um, is a remarkable background, but that's how you put your um, grace into action. Here she is, a pediatrician, caring, concerning for her patients, and she says, I'm going to stand up and be counted for them. 
Yeah. I love the book because you had so many stories and examples that brought each, the, each of the elements alive. And in the action chapter, you talked about we all have a choice when fa faced with disrespect or a lack of generosity, we can either tolerate it, leave or act, which brings us back to action. But there was one question that uh, came to mind, and it was all about this concept of civility. And how do you act with civility to someone who has disrespected you? Well, that's the $64,000 question. <laughs> if you've got an answer for that, Morag, then you are going to be a very wealthy woman. No, it comes with the understanding that we do not control events. We do not control what other people say about us. We only react, we only control how we react mm -hmm. to these things. And so we were taught as children that when um, uh, sticks and stones may break our bones, but words will never hurt me. Well, yeah. sadly, in our state of social media, words do hurt us, especially for our children who don't have the experience and the context and the maturity yet to deal with these things. It's, it, the basic way is how do we retreat it is you take the high road. And, um, and you know, <laughs> in Texas, there's a statement when somebody comes back at you or you say something something, you go, well, bless his heart. <laughs> so that's kind of the thing you do is you, you take the high road. Don't engage in that because what you're doing is you're lowering yourself to that person's level. And so um, be, think high. And it's very easy to say, you know, I mean, I write about grace. Um, I try to live a graceful life, uh, but I can tell you, I can be a class jerk when it comes into um, overreacting to silly slights. And that's the thing, just let it, this is where meditation or mindfulness comes in, you know, be mindful, be present in the moment, just walk away. And then as a meditative thing, you know, focus on you and focus on the moment, do some deep breathing, collect yourself, move on. And I love that because, again, if we talk about grace, we've talked about generosity, we've talked about respect, we've talked about action. The next piece you describe in the book is compassion. And it seems to me that it's compassion not just for others when they're being the brilliant jerk or they're having struggles, but compassion with ourselves when we aren't living up to the ideals of grace. That's a good. I'm glad you pulled pulled that out of there because we cannot be cat. Um, we cannot be compassionate toward others if we don't have compassionate for ourselves, and this is where gratitude comes in. And our colleagues Adrian Gostick and Chester Elton have wrote, mm. written a new book on leading with gratitude. And the the other side of gratitude is that it comes from within. That I'm grateful for me, because if I feel grateful for myself, I must have done something and therefore I have something to offer you and I mm -hmm. and it's not that I need to be great or number one in my field it's just that hey I can be a listening uh, a, a board a sounding board for you I'm I can be with you if you need my presence is worth something to you and that's a good life affirming um Act, action for ourselves, and then we can give it away by our how we connect with others. Okay, love that. So grace, generosity, respect, action, compassion, energy. Energy is the twin to um, mm -hmm. action, and it's the sense that a leader's role is to energize the organization, mobilize it for the greater good. A leader channels his or her energy into helping the team succeed. It's all about the team, the team, the team. And that takes a lot of energy, a lot of energy. And that's where grace comes in because grace, if we think of it, is generative. And it gives us that uh, we can recharge ourselves um, by by giving, and um, it's important to um, do that. And energy is very important to maintain a, a perspective on what I can do, how I can help my team. So, do me a favor, John. Show me. Uh, I've got a copy of the book on the Kindle, but it won't uh, reflect nice on the screen. So, this is what everybody's going to be looking for, and we'll talk about how you can get hold of the copy. It's in the, all the usual places. Thank you, John. I appreciate it. And so, as I think about the the lessons from the book, you talk about how we can all learn to live with grace by focusing on better. 
Tell me what you mean by focus on better. Well, I got this idea. Actually, it was a something that uh, Amy Cuddy, the Harvard mm, professor, and she writes about <laughs> presence, wrote about something about resolutions not working. And it triggered my thinking that if we focus on the resolution, then it becomes a rule and regular a rule, sort of. And we as human beings love to break the rules. Mm -hmm. So, um, but if we think of better as a process, and it's a process that you define, and uh, or maybe leave indefinite in the sense that. I will be a better colleague. I will be better, uh, a better spouse. I will be a better parent. And while generally, uh, as you know from your expert coaching, coaching must be specific in order to succeed. It's not that I want to be a better leader. That's good. But <clears throat> what does it mean? Well, it means I need to communicate more clearly. I need to delegate. I need to do specific actions that will help my team. By contrast, if we say better in a personal development sense, it's giving yourself a little bit of a wiggle room. I'm going to be a better colleague so that I will volunteer. I don't mean in a salary sense, giving up earnings, but if someone needs some help, I'll be there. I'll be a good listener. <laughs> Excuse me. I will be helpful to my colleagues. And sometimes I won't be, and mm -hmm. I'll remember that and I'll go, I'll be better the next time. So that's why I said, focus on better. Okay. So how about you, John? You talked earlier on about um, the energy required and how we as coaches still stumble. When you think about the five elements of grace, which is the, the one that you're working on right now? Probably. That's a good question. Um, I, uh, I, uh, I'm an, excuse me, I'm an action oriented person and I generally have a lot of energy. I'm weak in the soft skills, uh, generous, respectful, and compassionate. So yeah, those are all the things I need to work on. And maybe compassion in the sense that I know what I should do, but do I do it? And from compassion, in a way, stems, if I care for you, if I'm connected to you, then I'll be generous with you. And I will be respectful of you. And you could also say that it begins with respect, because if I have no respect for someone, then <clears throat> I can ignore that person. But maybe compassion, I think, is something that, um, that we need to work on, or at least I need to work on. See, and again, just the theme that I take away from that is it's not rocket science, um, but there is a gap between knowing and doing. It's ultimately a choice. And we can choose to show up with grace or we can choose to show up without grace. But then we have to stand in that truth and be ready to accept whatever impact or reputation that we create as a result. And that's, you've raised a very good point because, yes, it is, leadership is a choice, but so too is acting with grace. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it can be hard because we live in a um, society that kind of reveres the put down, reveals, re reveres the snide remark. You know, there's a term I use that's not original to me, but it's not social media, it's anti-social media mm. and where people simply want to tear down other people and doing it chronically that's an indication that that's not a very happy person and yeah. so while that person will be called out in a face-to-face -face situation um they can get away they get away with it online because there's anonymity and that's a sad thing so in other words acting with grace becomes counter to the cultural wave we're living in, which is why I wrote the book. I wanted to celebrate grace because I do believe there is much grace out there. And how do I know that? It's it, look in your community. It's the teachers, uh, a pastor, uh, uh, team coaches, um, civil servants, people who go out of their way to treat others better. I mean, it can be, my, I just was thinking about the post office. Um, my local post person is terrific. And, you know, that she acts with grace all the time, you know, and, uh, and, and we, you can be your, you know, um, 
people you meet in the market or and all of these kinds of things. These are simple and kind and it's kindness. It's not random acts of kindness. No. It's intended acts of kindness. And so kindness is perpetuated by grace. And there's an energetic quality if you think about grace because it's facilitative. But in a sense, the more you give, the more you get. If you get into yeah. quote a habit of grace, then you have more of it. You know, those in a faith-based tradition would say that grace comes from uh, a, a higher power. Um, and so the more you give, the higher power channels it through you. And so whatever your higher power is, whether it's transcendent or not transcendent, gr the concept of grace is working for you so you can do better for others. I love it, especially now. So, John, I appreciate our conversation and for you sharing your insights behind Grace and what people will discover within the book, Grace. How do they get hold of it? How do they get hold of you? Well, the, the book is available on Amazon. Everything is. It's available in Kindle, as you know. Thank you, uh, Marag. And it's the other one is uh, it's obviously in hardback and in paper now. Also, Audible. And I think uh, right now, Audible is outselling all the other editions. Mm -hmm. um, you can get a hold of me at johnbaldoni.com. And interesting, uh, give me a, a chance. At living through and uh, leading through the pandemic, I've created a special grace page on my website. It's just John Baldoni slash grace. Or if you go to my homepage, you'll see grace under pressure. And what I've done is I've extended the themes of grace to in two ways. One, our little video, selfie videos I've done on the personal issues that we as individuals or we as leaders are feeling like fear, resilience, or what's next those kinds of things. <clears throat> those are the personal videos. And then um, I've collected my recent writings from Forbes and Smart Brief on what it takes to lead in a pandemic. And so that's from an organizational standpoint. As we had talked earlier about looking for talent, um, that's the kind of article you found there. So it's just uh, go to Grace Under Pressure, which is on my website, johnbaldoni.com. So yeah, I knew you were a font of knowledge and wisdom. I can't wait to dive into some of more of those resources. John, thank you again for your time today. I've really enjoyed our conversation. Thank you, Moreg. It's a pleasure to be with you and thank you for this opportunity.